So walking up Crouch Hill, I love it up here, up in the Northern Heights. And today we're in search of trying to solve a great mystery, a great conundrum, a subterranean mystery, a buried mystery, an occluded part of the landscape. Yes, we are out river hunting. Nothing I love more than that, really. Well, beer, but you know. So the whole thing starts just over two years ago when I received an email after my um, Fillybrook walk they did with a new branch of the Fillybrook up in Walthamstow. That was a great day. And it was from a lady who said uh, that her partner, her husband, grew up just off Green Lanes in Haringey in, the, in a mansion block. And he remembered, he had a childhood memory of looking out from the back of his house towards St Anne's Road and seeing a stream with a wooden boat bobbing around in it. Well, that's curious, I thought, because she can't be referring to the new river because that's further kind of north. I don't know of any river running along that part of Haringey Green Lanes. I've subsequently walked the Moselle Brook. It's different, further north. What earth could she be referring to? So I did what any respectable person would do, and I went into the old maps, and I thought I found a river, a now lost river. And the 1863 Ordnance Survey map does appear to show a river that rises here in Crouch End, runs through the grounds of what was then known as Haringey House, built on the site of a, an old Tudor manor house, and then flows along the north side of what was then called Hanger, Hanger Lane, now St Anne's Road, and drops into the River Lee near what's today Markfield Park, near the, the railway junction. So that definitely seems to be a river, but what's it called? What's the name of this lost river? It must have a name, or maybe it doesn't have a name. So that started a two-year inquiry into the lost river that we're walking today. And I'll tell you the name and all the rest of it in a minute, actually. Keep watching. I love this little lane here, Abbott's Terrace, just near Crouch End Broadway, and it's obviously a remnant of the old villagey Crouch End. I mean, maybe it's not, I'm just kind of projecting that, I guess. So just down here, I think, I believe, or I've been told that we can hear the river right at the beginning, right at the beginning. So back in March, when I made a video around Crouch End, I came to the library which is just along the street. And a fellow called Joe very helpfully commented that in this street, you can hear the river, the buried, a buried river that rises in Crouch End beneath a manhole cover at the end of the street. Now this is the end near the Broadway. There's the wonderful old recording studios over there with you know, the generator of the famous Bob Dylan story. I don't think it's one of these. No, my My gut instinct is it's at the other end. And here is the majestic Hornsey Library with this beautiful little water feature beside it. I did discover the name of the river and not only that, another river as well. And actually, I had seen the name of it before when I was doing the Moselle Brook walk and using Tom Bolton's Lost Rivers of London and he mentions this river. Now, for some reason it didn't stick, but uh, I'll tell you the name of it when we actually can hear it. And then that's a good time to drop the name, right? Some of you will know, you'll be going in the comments now going, I know, it's the brook, but yeah, I love this stuff. You must, I just, 
I have no words. Well, I do, I have too many words a lot of the time, don't I? And look, I have the book. I finally have the book in my hands. It's real, it's here, available to buy from all good booksellers now. There'll be links below to places where you can buy and um, buy my new book. Welcome to New London, Journeys and Encounters in the Post-Olympic City. I'll talk more about that maybe later or in a separate video. But anyway, it's here, it's here. Prime Zone Muse. That is an unusual name for a muse, isn't it? I wonder where that came from. Now, a classic thing with river hunting, as many of you will know from previous videos, is reading the shape of the land. And we're going to have to do that today because the map we're using is from 1863, where very few of the buildings uh, in this area were actually here. So we're going to have to read the shape of the land. And look, there's a definite dip here into that lower ground where that, the river could be running there. It and uh, a little bit of a test for you. Oh, actually, look, before we go any further, Pinehurst Muse, and of course, Pinehurst is in my book, The Pinehurst Burial Mound. There's a video from 2015. It sets off an amazing quest that's one of my favorite parts of the book. It's nice to see, that's a message. I'm sure a lot of you will remember from previous videos, the things we look for, we, we look for things like the shape of the land. The, the rivers tend to stick to lower ground. You can see behind me, look, there's lower ground down there. If there's a river in the area, that could be the course of it there. And also then, we d they tended to avoid building over them. So you're looking for gaps between buildings, sort of unusual gaps between buildings where you think people would build. Or there's often things like substations, obviously sewage works, public utilities, cheap land, not housing. Rarely build housing over buried rivers. It does happen. And of course, this river, like all the lost rivers, obviously is buried deep in a culvert. And the name, you see references to the name of the river and the word, just the word brook or watercourse, river Rhine sounding names tend to follow the river. And here today, there are actually two rivers that are close by. I haven't told you the name yet, I know, but once I do, don't worry. And from looking at the map, that's one of the ways I kind of found the course of the, the river on the map. Not many, but there's enough. Right, oh my God, I can hear it. I can hear it from here. It's 20 yards away, I can hear it. Well, thank you, Joe. Here it is at the end of Haringey Park. It is loud because there was a lot of rain this week. So this is a perfect time to do this. I hope you can hear that. And what I think you can hear there is the sound of the Stonebridge Brook. Yes, that's what I believe this little river is called, the Stonebridge Brook. I do have some notes on the course of the river on the other side of the railway line. It references the side on here, the, the wonderful blog, Edith Streets, which is a great source of information. And it documents some places where it flows uh, around Whiteman Road and Green Lanes and then it confirms the route around St Anne's Road. From here to there, I think it runs along Western Park, which is just down the hill, which would make sense, wouldn't it? We see the, the drop of the land here. It does get diverted quite a lot, which must be how it's here. It was, when it was culverted, they kept moving the culvert to accommodate building, to accommodate the railway yard and the railways, which will cross. Great start. Great start to hear the river at the beginning. Now there is a really great local online kind of forum called well, it's Haringey Online and the people on there provided some of the notes and observations about the river and somebody recorded it on the other side of the, uh, of the railway line, which is brilliant. So it's a real kind of community effort, this. It's brilliant. You see, everyone loves a lost river. You can never write off a lost river. You can bury them. You can malign them, you can turn them into sewers, but they always come back and they're with us. They're with us constantly. And of course, here we go. We're walking along Bourne Road, which is a river Rhine, has river Rhine associations, a Bourne. Just trying to think, a Bourne is a stream, isn't it? Or a crossing, something like that. I'll put the correct uh, etymology on the screen. So already we've picked up a river Rhine reference and we're gonna turn right here into, I think this is, this is Western Park and we are in 
Shaun of the Dead territory now, as many of you will know, but that is not our fixation. I've covered that a number of times. So I hope maybe that's the last reference to Shaun of the Dead. And Edith Streets mentions the Stonebridge Brook crossing over the railway line from here, from Western Park. So we'll follow Western Park for as far as we can, then cross over the railway line there. And the other brook that runs along a similar course is the Hermitage Brook. And we'll see references to that, hopefully. And you can see the really steep rise of the land there at Fern Park Road. So we're at the bottom of a hill here. That doesn't always obviously mean there's a river, but often it is a good sign as well. And the Moselle is running through the sort of further north through Crouch End, the top end of Crouch End. There's a number of rivers and streams, the, the Moselle, the Stonebridge Brook, the Hermitage Brook, all running through these hills, running off the northern heights into the River Lee, I should say. And in my enthusiasm and excitement, I forgot to mention, yes, <laughs> this is another tributary of the River Lee. So we can add this to the list of tributaries of the River Lee. I think I need to do a playlist of tributaries of the River Lee, don't I? I love them. I love them so much. It's a beautiful day today as well. It's been a horrible week. It's rained nearly every day. It's been really difficult to know when I was going to be able to do a walk to film this. And today it's just come out really nice. It's going to rain for the next week as well. So this is a real bonus. It's Nelson Road. Sorry, Shaun of the Dead. Nelson, remember? I think they live in Nelson Road. The shop is over there. What's the shopkeeper called in Shaun of the Dead? It's called Nelson. I think the house is there. The Shaun of the Dead house is up there on the right. The opening scene. You'll probably find it here on YouTube. And that is the shop over there. We're walking past it, so we'll mention it. So that Londis over there is where Sean goes to get his uh, Diet Coke and Cornettos. And where we first uh, see the zombies. I've done that. I've gone in there and bought Diet Coke and a Cornetto, obviously. That's in my first book, This Other London. So I'm just taking a detour into Stationers Park because there's a little pond in here. So that could have been fed by the, the brook. And there also might be a reference to the brook here somewhere in the park. And I remember walking through here about, I don't know, nearly 10 years ago and seeing this and wondering if it was a lost river. The, uh, maybe this is the Stonebridge Brook or the Hermitage Brook. So look, you can see it running through the park here. It's not just a pond. I remember when I saw this, it was about 10 years ago. I wondered if it was a river, bearing in mind where it sits at the base of a hill. And I wondered, I don't know, I wonder if it was the Moselle. I think I assumed it was the Moselle, but when I did the Moselle Brook walk, I realized that was far to the north. So perhaps this is the Stonebridge Brook or a diverted part of it, or maybe the Hermitage Brook, or maybe it's just a water feature. That is the kind of thing that we can look up afterwards. But I don't like to break the magic of the quest by going on my phone and trying to open a PDF from Haringey Council. That's one for uh, this evening. The obvious assumption to make is that it runs between those two houses there. You can see there's a gate there and the railway lines are on the other side. But I, from what I've read, it was diverted a number of times as the railways were built and then expanded. So who knows what the original course was. Here we're really following the course of the culvert. So we will cross over the railway lines and find uh, the site on the other side where we know it can be heard. And actually, here we go. We can hear it. We can hear it here, very loud. This is on Upland. This is Uplands Road. Got my mic down there. I would say that's the Stonebridge Brook, or perhaps the Hermitage Brook, but yeah, wow, it's too, too clear. Can we see it? Can't really see it. And this is the junction of Western Park and Uplands Road. And you, you can see, look, here's the gap between the houses and the fence and the substation there. So there you go all the classic indicators. Just making our way to the bridge that takes us over the railway tracks and the next section of the quest. Absolutely massive substation there, electricity substation. And 
here we have the new river, which gives me another opportunity to say, yes, I am going to walk the whole thing in one go. Well, not one go, two goes probably. Maybe I'll do it over the winter, but maybe I'll leave it for summer when we've got the long days. But yeah, the, the Stonebridge Brook and the Hermitage Brook would have had to have crossed this at some point, or maybe they're buried beneath it. Actually, that is a good point, because there would be a pipe carrying it across, wouldn't there, further down there. We know it runs through the yard of an old council depot yard, and we're going to go there now. But we can't go in, I don't think we can go into the yard, but we know where it was uh, culvert, well, crossed into Whiteman Road. And it was uh, lovely to meet Angela and Rigby back there, just near Hornsey Railway Station, viewers of the channel. Lovely to meet you guys. Always lovely to meet people who watch the videos, I love that. If you see me out and about, and you feel up to it, just come and say hello. I'm always happy to, not happy to, I love meeting people that watch the videos. Interested in the same things I'm interested in, right? So now we're going to turn into right Whiteman Road, which is a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me because this is where I lived in my, in my last year at City Poly. Amazing year, massive house down here. Close to where the Stonebridge Brook rang. Maybe I could feel it. Maybe this is where it comes from. It's really actually when my whole topographical kind of passion really kicked in in a serious way when I was living up here. So when I was living here that my London wanderings really took on a whole new level actually and a more, I don't know, how should we say, more systematic way of documenting them and writing it all down, making notes about the area when I lived up here because I started wandering around Crouch End, Hornsey, Haringey, I had a bit of time in my hands in my last year at uni. So it was, uh, yeah, it's a special place, Whiteman Road, great road. And all these little streets. <laughs> And all these little streets that run off Whiteman Road down to Green Lanes are collectively known as the Haringey Ladder. Because if you look at it on a map, it looks like a ladder. You've got Green Lanes down there running parallel to Whiteman Road here, and you've got lots of little streets connecting them all the way along. And that is where the Stonebridge Brook goes, across a couple of these streets. So we have this little park here. And then just to the right of that, we have Fairfax Road, and Edith Street says that the uh, the Stonebridge Brook was diverted in its culvert just to the north of Fairfax Road, which would be here. And, it, and then it zigzagged between here and the road next to it, which I think is Effingham Road. And then you can see up there, there's a steep incline, a steep rise in the ground, so that would make sense. So we'll cross the road and go down here. And this, um, MOT place here, which is opposite the end of Effingham Road on uh, Whiteman Road. Someone from the wonderful Haringey Online forum went in there and recorded the sound of an underground watercourse. Quite how that squares with it running to the north of uh, Fairfax Road there, I'm not sure, but we'll take it. Maybe it ran along the backs of these houses, then crossed the road. Entirely possible. And here is Effingham Road. So we'll go down. I think we'll go back to Fairfax. Here's the magnificent Haringey Passage. I love this little alleyway here. It's actually built over the course of a sewer that was built in the 1870s. And it kind of paved the way for the, for the building of these houses here. So we emerge onto Green Lanes and the river must be crossing just up here somewhere. And Green Lanes is said to be the the longest continuous road with the same name in London. That's a fact I found online, along with the fact that it's believed that this road could date back to the second century. I have a feeling that that big blocky building there was a, a ventilation shaft for the Piccadilly line. I could have that wrong, but there is one in Kalina Road, which is over there somewhere. So I think this lovely bit of Art Deco here was uh, originally the Salisbury Parade which uh, once had the electric cinema here, the Coliseum Electric Cinema, built in 1912 and had various incarnations as a bingo hall, a ballroom, a gay nightclub, and some of it now seems to be a numerous thing, snooker club, gym, Tesco's Express, and there seems to be some flats built on the corner as well, which is probably where the cinema was, I think. So the majestic Salisbury Hotel there, the Salisbury Pub as it is now, sits on the corner of St Anne's Road. That pub opens right at the end of the 19th century. And we know from the old map that the Stonebridge Brook is running just to the north of St Anne's Road. 
then called Hanger Lane back in the day in the 19th century. So we know the river's running to the north of the old Hanger Lane, today St Anne's Road, which is probably just behind these houses and shops, and it runs across what's today Chestnuts Field. So we'll go into Chestnuts Field, or Chestnuts Park, and see if we can see indicators there. Of course, the original email related to a sighting of the river behind uh, Salisbury Mansions, which I haven't quite located it yet, but it's around here, basically. So this is all consistent, both the mythology of the boat with a set of steps leading down to the boat. And there's also a subterranean lake that had boats that relates to a site further along. Can I just say how polite everyone has been when I've been filming? The amount of people that have ducked beneath the camera. It's delightful. I don't expect anyone to do that. It's lovely. And it was also really lovely to meet uh, Owen back there, who uh, recognised me from videos I made with Nick Papadimitrio, which is a while ago. <laughs> that is a long time ago. So uh, Owen's a, a proper OG viewer <laughs> from from, as we would say, back in the day. i going to go and see Nick at some point. Nick, come on, mate. So I'm just turning off um, St Anne's Road along Woodlands Park Road, just to see if I can see any indicators of the river here, running just to the north of St Anne's Road, Hanger Lane, as it was known. And another intriguing note on the Haringey Online Forum was a reference to a 1906 report by the local public health committee, the Tottenham Urban District Council Public Health Committee. And they were looking at a number of health issues in the area and one of them was an outbreak of typhoid or a number of typhoid cases that they linked to the Stonebridge Brook and the Moselle. And among the improvements that they put forward or they carried out to deal with that was to culvert the Stonebridge Brook in a number of places, but that's on the other side of Chestnuts Park, but consequently we do then know that it was culverted in certain places, not least Culvert Road. Well, I think Culvert Road though, it's interesting, isn't it? I'm not sure if that's from the Moselle, or well, maybe they merged the rivers there, I can't remember actually. Uh, but the Culvert Road is a, obviously, <laughs> is a bit of a giveaway. And there's a few other sites as well, so we're gonna go into Chestnuts here. It's an interesting building here in Conway Road. Look at that, fascinating bit of architecture. So I've come back onto St Anne's Road because I caught a glimpse of the magnificent old Victorian water tower on the site of St Anne's Hospital and I've lost sight of it. It's gone, the nearer I've got to it. It reminds me of the amazing John Smith film, The Black Tower. But it reminded me in the email correspondence with Rebecca, who sent the email that triggered it all. And in, in Rebecca's inquiries, somebody who used to work at the site, I think a nurse, reported that in the basement of the nurses' quarters, there was a set of steps that led into a basement where there was a lake with boats on it. I think it, apparently there was a spring that rose on the site that maybe uh, fed that was used by the hospital. I don't think it's the Stonebridge Brook, it's in the wrong place. Could have a relationship with the Hermitage Brook or it could just be another spring that was used by the hospital. But more water, more subterranean water mysteries. What about that, a lake in the basement of a block of flats with boats on it? Imagine that, imagine going down into the basement and finding a lake there with boats on it. This is the landscape of mystery. This Chestnuts Park we're going in. This is Chestnuts Park. And from my estimation, the, the brook could be running to the north side of the park. And if so, it could be a really good opportunity for a bit of daylighting if that is where it is indeed running. I wonder if this large stone, well, cap here is um, covering access to the, to the culvert that carries the Stonebridge Brook. This is at the back of Chestnuts Park and there's another, I think there's another manhole cover over there or it could just be a piece of cardboard. Yeah, it's just a bit of wood, but I'm, going to, I'm actually going to double back myself a little bit to the entrance to the park. No, I can't see anything there. But we'll follow where I think the course of the river flows along the top of the park and then go to where we know it was culverted. So we will exit the park here into the streets that carry the Stonebridge Brook. This is Alexandra Road. So we know from the 1906 
Tottenham Urban District Council report that they uh, report they recommended the culverting of the uh, the Stonebridge Brook between here, Avenue Road and the adjacent road just around the corner here, Stone, um, South Grove, and then into Culvert Road. They said these were works that were under consideration. This is South Grove, and the river must be crossing here somewhere down there. And there's plenty of industrial buildings here that would be the kind of sites built over a buried river. As you can see, look, it's slightly lower ground there. There's an industrial building there opposite the school. So we go into Culvert Road now, which is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? So the river must be running beneath the ground here. Exciting. So as we arrive at Seven Sisters Road here, I think it's running through that industrial estate over there on the right, but that's a series of dead ends. However, if we turn up Seven Sisters Road, we have the site of Stonebridge House, marked, I think, by Stonebridge Road or Stonebridge Close. So let's go and have a look at that. Yeah, I, I would say the river's running through this industrial area here, but Stonebridge Road is also on the site where the river could be running, on the site of Stonebridge House. We need to log the name as well. So just opposite Seven Sisters Station, we've got Stonebridge Road here, which isn't exactly on the site of uh, Stonebridge House. That's on the uh, other side. It's a bit further over there anyway, um, but it marks roughly the, uh, the area occupied by Stonebridge. And it's a great reference to the river, which would have passed through here. And now we've got to do really uh, only our second bit of proper river road zigzag where we've got to walk up to the end of Seven Sisters Road here and back along the other side to get to roughly the course of the river. So we're not far from the confluence with the River Lee now. We're just going to double back down uh, Tottenham High Road and then see how close we can get to the course of the river. The river ran on the north side of the railway and I don't think we can follow it, but we'll only know if we look. On the 1860s map, you can see that the river sort of hugs the north side of the railway line here. You can see it at South Tottenham as it heads that way towards the Lynn and it crosses the railway line just at the end, just before it makes its confluence with the Lynn. But I don't think we can walk through that way. But if we walk on the other side of the railway line, we could catch the point where it crosses over to make the confluence with the Lee, maybe. So we're going to go down here, down Crowland Road, great name, eh? And hopefully the uh, Stonebridge Brook crosses the end of Crowland Road, or um, more likely it's where we uh, go into Markfield Park. So it's interesting that the river seems to cross the railway line just near um, the corner of Page Green Road, which is directly to the left of the frame on the other side of the railway line, and comes out, it looks like, at the end of this road here, and continues parallel to the railway line until it drops into the lee. So we've got that exciting moment just up ahead. It is really gratifying when you get these moments, because like I say, the map, the 1860s map, a lot of the street names aren't on here. So it's kind of useful, but not useful, if you know what I mean. Um, but when you, ah, I don't know, I rarely get it right, do I? And I am doing this one myself. So yeah, it seems to come through here. It must be running basically along there through that other where those football pitches are. So if we go through the gates here, if we go through these gates, and on the left, it should be there. You never know. Now there is a curve in the railway line, just over there, to the other side of the Markfield beam engine. And it's close to there, is just where the Stonebridge Brook makes its confluence with the River Lee, which is there. Um, some of the more keen-eyed of you may have noticed as well, this is also where the Moselle makes its confluence with the Lee, or very close to here, so, hmm, interesting. Where would we be without these brilliant heritage boards? This map here from 1955, it doesn't show the, but you see, this is, look, piped conduit there. It's a piped conduit, but here on the 1864 map, you can see, look, there's the watercourse there, Stonebridge House, there's the watercourse crosses near Page Green Road and runs down here to make its confluence with the Lee, uh, which is interesting because it is very close to here where the confluence 
with the Moselle makes its confluence with the Lee as well. So whether they've been confused over time or not, I don't know. So there, there is the railway bridge up there. And I remember leaning over there to find the confluence of the Moselle and the Lee. And just here, a little bit further south, look, you've got some outlets here, which could be the confluence of the Stonebridge Brook and the Lee, a sacred spot. Well, what a magnificent walk. One of my, that goes, I think that's in my top five of the year already. It's just, I love it so much. I love hunting a lost river, particularly these kind of more, uh, these, you know, really, really seriously overlooked lost rivers that you know, next day a lot of people didn't know the name. Thank you so much to Rebecca for sending the email that kick-started this odyssey just over two years ago. What an amazing, even the email journey has been amazing and just tracing it on the maps finding those references to Haringey Online. Thanks for the wonderful residents of Haringey Online who post that information, which helped this quest as well. And it's been, I, oh, I love it. I love it so much. And also I'd love to hear your comments below about any information you have about the Stonebridge Brook, the Hermitage Brook, or any other rivers that you're not sure if they exist or if you know the names of them. So again, once again, I'm gonna, um, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people. I'm on one of the busiest little towpaths in London. Let me get off out of the way. Um, once again, here's the book. The book is real. You can order it now. You can buy it from your local bookshop. You can buy it from Wanstead Bookshop, Newham Bookshop. You can buy it from Phlox, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. You can buy it from Foils. You can buy it from the bookseller Crow. You can buy it from Waterstones. You can obviously also buy it from that very popular online bookseller as well. Um, yes, I'm so excited and overwhelmed by this. Look out for me doing events. I'll be doing a signing at Phlox in Leighton on the 3rd of November and the Barbican Arts Library on the 16th of November. That's amazing. And there'll be others as well between now and Christmas and then next year. And also, if you fancy like inviting me to do a talk somewhere, I'm, always, I'm up for it. You know, I'm, I'm up for it. So as I always like to say, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And also, just another thing I'd like to say thank you for all your support. It means everything to me. Um, and moments like this when the book is published, a little moments when it kind of crystallises into a thing, like this thing, this book thing. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Oh, it's magnificent. I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed with the, uh, with the essence and the magic of the Stonebridge book, but I'm now gonna um, take in the essence of uh, a local brewery, I think.